According to the Chronicles, in 1472, Abbot Carl Gustinsis was arrested on the basis of a false denunciation and interrogated in connection with having caused a certain prominent lady to fall ill. While he was being held in a dungeon, the abbot was given only a crust of stale bread every day, along with a dipper of rotten, stinking water. After 40 days, the prison warden noticed that Father Carl not only had not gone into decline, but he even seemed to have gained health and strength, which only served to convince the inquisitors that the abbot had connections with dark forces. Later, Carl Gustensis confessed under brutal torture that he had recited a prayer over the rotten water he was given, thanking the Lord for bestowing these trials upon him. After that, the water tasted bland and turned fresh and clear. We have two containers of emulsified crude oil, which is a byproduct of oil production, a stable combination of water and oil, which remain bound in this state for years. The test sample is irradiated. The element will treat one container for seven days, making the water molecules lessen their contact with the oil molecules. After four days, we compare the test sample and the control. The water has separated from the oil, at the boundary between the water and oil phases, there are crater-like formations. This means that the separation process is continuing. The fields we use to influence the water are comparable in intensity with the electromagnetic field of the human heart. On the seventh day of treatment, the experiment is finished the water has completely separated from the oil. Experts estimate that oil men have accumulated around a billion tons of emulsified crude oil. It cannot be used for industrial purposes. Ultimately, they get rid of the emulsion, pouring it right onto the ground. And then, horrible sludge lakes are formed in the oil fields. of the Pemon Indian tribe in Venezuela, Roraima is translated as the mother of all waters. A group of Russian biophysicists set out for this destination in January 2005 to collect a unique sample of water, which scientists say has never been in direct contact with human beings. Such water exists in only one place on Earth, in Venezuela. According to one hypothesis, a continent called Gondwana existed in the southern hemisphere during the Paleozoic era. Powerful tectonic processes occurring in the Earth's crust 3.5 million years ago split it into several parts. As a result of these changes, some segments of the continent sank, while those resting on granite substrates remained at their previous level. Elevated plateaus were formed, which the Indians called tepuis, meaning pillars. Roraima is the largest of them. It's a really remote place, very hard to get to. Three days of travel through the savanna and then the jungles. Then you climb an 800-meter wall. It takes a certain amount of enthusiasm. Therefore, we can say that the water we have there is in a unique, virgin state. There is always a large cloud over Roraima. 
As evening approaches, a light haze appears. When the moon comes out from behind the mountains, the mist begins to glow with an even blue light. And in that light, it is visible how fine droplets of moisture are hanging in the still air. The slightest breath of a breeze and this watery dust forms into drops. This is the origin of the rain which rushes down in countless waterfalls. Nowhere in the world is water the same. Breaking its way to the surface through minerals and ores, water assimilates the vibrations of the soil and information about its specific biological and energetic features. We tested a sample of purified municipal water, which is sold in large bottles, and the producer puts a label on them which says it is the best water in the world. But it is empty and dead. True, it's pure and it's good, and some minerals have been added, but this is dead water in which there is no energetics and there is no life. Most likely, people do not sense any particular difference between naturally pure and artificially purified water. But any animal will always choose water from a spring, because this water is loaded with natural energies. Not long ago, yet another unique property of natural water was discovered. It turns out that such natural water is flammable. The burning of natural water, the water itself burns, and the reason it burns is precisely that it is structured in a special way natural water is. Burning, in rigorous scientific terms, is a process of oxidation in which heat and light are given off. In the case of water, it burns at the temperature of the environment, and the light emitted can be recorded using super-sensitive instruments. In burning, you have oxygen being continuously activated, and some organic matter is continuously burning. So the burning of water is a process that happens over an extended period of time, because if it were a process that happened more quickly, then it would have already burned up all the water on Earth. On June 30th, 1940, a note was tossed into the Soviet Embassy in Germany. Its author requested to be contacted immediately. If this does not happen, my work with Heydrich will go to waste, wrote Agent Willy Lechmann, codenamed Breitenbach. He hastened to report on secret testing facilities and work being done on making synthetic gasoline from brown coal using water. Back in 1913, Kaiser Wilhelm had ordered Franz Fischer, a leading chemist, to make sure Germany had liquid fuel supplies. Not having its own oil could put Germany in a weak position in the impending war. By 1941, German scientists had succeeded in obtaining fuel by hydrogenating coal. This fuel, however, was 10 to 12 times more expensive than natural fuel refined from oil and it was of such poor quality that it badly damaged the military vehicles in which it was used. After the war, these efforts to produce fuel using water were abandoned as futile. For the past 15 years, the researcher Jean Gohua has been working to create fuel of this type. Now we shall demonstrate for everyone the process of preparing emulsified diesel fuel and show its two aspects. One aspect is increased energy and the other is reduction of exhaust gases. This is fuel taken from an automobile, structurized water. If we take the proportions, it is 79% diesel fuel 20% water and 1% emulsifying agent. What was added here is water. Zhang shows us that what is added to the fuel really is water. Now we shall add the 1% emulsifying agent. An emulsified solution resembling milk forms immediately. 
We pour the emulsified fuel into the car and use it for propulsion. Measured over the long term, there was a 5% increase in power, with over 20% fuel economy. Our government views this as very important. I think that not even all chemists remember this aspect. If you take gasoline and completely dry it out, it always contains some quantity of water. And if you give it a special treatment to remove all of the water from the gasoline, the gasoline will not burn. This was known already in the 19th century. To burn anything whatsoever, there has to be at least some quantity of water. Water has a direct effect on our brains. There is a legend among the Persian Sufis. Once upon a time, a wise man said that the day would come when all the water in the world, except for what had been specially collected, would disappear. And then different water would replace it. But anyone who drank the new water would lose his mind. Only one man took the prophecy seriously and began to store up water. But the day that had been predicted did come, and every body of water emptied out. The man who had listened to the wise man drank water from his supply. And then, the bodies of water and wells filled up with water again. People thirstily drank this water, and every one of them went crazy. But the man who had listened to the wise man continued to drink water only from his own supply and kept his sanity. And he was the only sane person left among the madmen, and therefore he was called crazy. And then he poured his reserves of real water, the old water, onto the ground, and he drank the new water and lost his mind. And the madmen decided that he had become sane. major part of our, our brain, of our brains are water. So the water and the easy movement of the water molecules and so on will leave part of that imprint. So yes, to some extent, the water is implicated in the patterning of the information in the brain. Now when you look at organs, say the heart or the lung, or muscles, or the brain, then all that you can see in a simple NMR experiment is the water in these organs. The water, your head is full of water. There is nothing else but water, almost. Let's imagine that here we have a human being and here we have water. This water contains many different types of information. If we introduce this water into the human body, then that human body will assimilate this information, which may change the person's characteristics. That may change. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells and they've lost their electrical charge so they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease and uh, arthritis and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structured water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, 
and they have their electrical charge so they repel each other that allows them to carry oxygen and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment I think that's utterly amazing that that a water could, that just drinking water could do that